So team keep it clean. I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game that we all watched yesterday. A lot of us together. Shout out to everybody that was in the live stream between the Ravens and the Falcons. And I also got a pretty unpopular opinion that I think a lot of Ravens fans aren't going to want to hear, but I think they need to hear this. Very important. So we can get straight into it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video, single update on our Baltimore Ravens. And also leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. So getting straight into it. My unpopular opinion is all about the backup quarterbacks. We saw Josh Johnson yesterday. He looked a lot better than he did the previous week. Uh, I think Josh Johnson, he was reading every single tweet, reading every single YouTube comment, listening to every single podcast that talked about how the Baltimore Ravens need to upgrade the QB position. He heard suggestions about Cam Newton. He heard suggestions even about recently fired from ESPN, Robert Griffin III to come back again. Uh, we've talked about Ryan Tannehill. So I'm sure he heard all of that from everybody and he was like you know what i'm gonna show them ravens fans something watch this josh johnson literally had a perfect day went 11 for 11 for about 120 yards and the touchdown on the touchdown pass uh he motioned keith kirkwood from the right to the left side and then he did a play action faked it to the running back but kept it rolled out and then hit Owen right Owen right caught the ball and he ran and dove over the pylon touchdown it was beautiful it was beautiful, and that ended Josh Johnson's day. So he looked very poised yesterday. He looked comfortable, and he did not get rattled. And that's everything you want to see, not, not only from your backup, but from your starting quarterback too. So those were excellent traits from Josh Johnson in that game yesterday, even in, in plays where he should have been shaken up. There were two plays specifically that were really out of his control. One of them was when the Baltimore Ravens gave up pressure literally right up the middle. And as a quarterback, whether you mobile or not, there's really nothing you can do about that because the pressure from the outside, you can step up in the pocket, but pressure from straight up the middle, you're done <laughs> well, unless you got some extreme athletic ability. But if you don't, you're done. That's a wrap. Even if you do got athletic ability, you could be done. But Josh Johnson, he was done on that play. And then there was the other play with Ben Cleveland. He got a little jealous. He was like, man, these quarterbacks, they get all the shine. I want to throw the ball too. But Ben Cleveland, well, he's, he snapped the ball way over Josh Johnson's head. Um, but it's one of the things that's like, hey, He's not a natural center. That's not his position. But they're trying it, and stuff like that is going to happen. So it is exactly what it is. So that was Josh Johnson. We also saw uh, Devin Leary for a little bit yesterday. Not too much. He went what, three for five. So we saw him a little bit. But then uh, for the majority of the second half, we saw Emory Jones. And Emory Jones, boy, he looked good. He looked good. He looked smooth. I know a lot of people, when he first came out there, a lot of people say, oh, he don't got the arm. He ain't got the big arm. That's his downfall. But Emory Jones said, oh, I don't got what? Watch this. Dayton Wade, he started running. He faked like he was going to cut in and then cut back out. And the defender, the cornerback, he bit hard on it, and that was all she wrote. And Emory Jones hit Dayton Wade in stride, perfect throw, perfect route, perfect catch, perfect touchdown. That play was so beautifully designed. I appreciated it so much because uh, so many times we see uh, different plays from all, teams all across the league uh, to where the route is run perfectly. But it's something because football is such a team sport. It's something that breaks down to where that play, it does not get executed like that. It does not come together like that. Uh, whether it's the quarterback getting sacked, whether it's uh, a, a fumble, whether it's the receiver dropping it, whether it's the quarterback going to a different receiver on the play, not even looking at in that receiver's direction. So many things could happen, an overthrow, an underthrow, an intercept, so many different things could happen. But to watch it all come together like it did yesterday in that play, that was beautiful for that 56-yard touchdown. But, again, back to the unpopular opinion. We saw the backup quarterbacks yesterday in the talk this week. The previous week had been, oh, my goodness, we need to upgrade the backup QB position. But a lot of Ravens fans know that Josh Johnson is going to be the Ravens backup quarterback. Most Ravens fans have accepted that whether they like it or they don't like it. But uh, when it comes to QB three, because that's a, a new position uh, on teams right now to where the, that QB three doesn't count on the roster, but he can still dress for games. The QB three um, last week, I would say it would be Devin Leary. That's Ravens. What? Six round draft pick. Got a relationship with T. Martin and whatnot. So, yeah, he, he he's, he's in there. But after watching yesterday's game, you would think, oh, QB three, Emory Jones. It got to be him. Right. Wrong. And he played better than Devin Leary. He looked 
better than Devin Leary, in my opinion. And I know in a lot of y'all's opinions too. But the thing with that is you know how the Ravens feel about draft picks. You know the Baltimore Ravens do not like cutting draft picks. So the reason I say it's unpopular is because most people would think, all right, Josh Johnson, Emory Jones, those are backup quarterbacks. But I don't think that's going to be the case because the Baltimore Ravens, they really like Devin Leary. They really do. And as not comfortable as he's looked these past couple of games, especially last week, this week he looked a little more comfortable. He had some off throws when he first started playing. Again, he played very shortly. He didn't play that much. But um, I think they're going to stick with him uh, as that QB3. Uh, so we'll see. Again, next week they still got another game to be played, and so they still got some more evaluation to do. Obviously got practice all of this week. Got the joint practice with the Green Bay Packers, so that should be interesting. But – I think that Devin Leary, that he is going to end up winning that job uh, just kind of be by default since he was a draft pick. But again, we'll see, because I think this year, especially, I mean, it happens every year. It's going to be tough for Ravens to keep all of their draft picks. Um, you go to the defensive side of the ball. You think about everything that they have at the safety position. And shout out to Eddie Jackson. because Eddie Jackson was playing uh, yesterday. But. Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, Ardarius Washington, he kind of safety slash corner. Um, but Eddie Jackson, Daryl Worley, then you got Sanusi Kane, you got Bo Braid, undrafted rookie free agent, but Bo Braid, he, he's been looking good. So what do you do that you got so many safeties? Are you going to keep, you're not going to keep six safeties. Are you even going to keep five? Uh, maybe, but then what about the secondary? You got a lot of people in the secondary too. So Ravens going to have some tough, tough decisions to make. Now, um, we don't need to talk about a running game because <laughs> Ravens running game was absent yesterday. L listen to these numbers, and I, and I get it as preseason, but still. Ravens in a run game, they had 30 carries for 71 yards. They averaged 2.4 yards a carry. The Baltimore Ravens offensive line pass blocking yesterday. They did their thing for the most part. There were some plays where it was like, Ew, yikes. But run blocking, no. Nah. Yesterday was not the day. It, not at all. So there was nothing memorable that came from the running game yesterday. There's nothing that stood out. It was rough. It was rough. Um, but John Kelly, shout out to him because he had the highest average per carry yesterday. He had five carries for 21 yards, average for 4.2 yards per carry. And that's the veteran. That's the veteran that they signed uh, in Rasheen Ali's absence. Um, but no, no running backs really stood out yesterday uh, at all, in my opinion. Um, special teams. We talked about offense, we talked about running game, we talked about the passing game, um, but special teams, Young Hoku, so we ain't got to talk about Justin Tucker, Justin Tucker cool, but Young Hoku, who a lot of people said that he was better than Justin Tucker at one point, and when people said that, uh, yeah, no, but whatever, you can say what you want to say, he, that was right, he went what, one for four yesterday, he missed three field goals, now he almost went two for four, but there was a, uh, a false start on one of those kicks, and they, they had to back up. So then he ended up missing it while I left. So shout out to all y'all up there. Uh, MB more that's getting your free uh, nuggets from McDonald's. Enjoy him. Enjoy him. Shout, shout out to you got to thank Young Hoku for that, man. So he's giving y'all free food. So he, he must really love Baltimore up there. But anyway, um, on defense, on defense, some people that stood out to me, some people who look good. Uh, David Ajabo. David Ajabo. And again, this is nothing new. David Ajabo, when he plays, he looks good. He looks smooth. That little spin move he got is nasty. David Ajabo, he, gonna, he stays healthy. He's going to be something. And, and I, I just hope that this is the year where we can remove that asterisk off of David Ajabo because I, I hate when we have to say that about players. I, I hate it so much because it sucks, man. It sucks that um, injuries have impacted their careers negatively. Obviously, no injury is good, but – when injuries impact the career negatively, that means they keep on happening. So hopefully we can remove that asterisk if he stays healthy. We can take that out because he'll be healthy. So with David Ajabo, he going to make some noise, man. He going to make some noise for sure. Um, Joe Evans, I didn't really see him yesterday. I didn't really hear from him yesterday. Number 48, pass rusher. Um, very quiet. Like last week's game, he was all in the backfield. All in the backfield But yesterday's game I didn't really hear too much from him um, Sticking with pass rushes uh, Adisa Isaac Adisa Isaac He hasn't really stood He didn't really stand out in the game to me yesterday um, Now he did almost He tried to get that interception That would have been nice for him um, Where uh, Pepe Williams Who continues to be an excellent blitzer 
Uh, with Pepe Williams blitz, he got to the quarterback, and it was like close to being a fumble, but I don't, I don't think it was a fumble. But anyway, Adisa Isaac tried to jump over the offensive lineman and reach and get the pick, but he was just short. But um, as far as pass rushing, maybe I just didn't notice it, but I, I didn't really see him too often do anything yesterday. But again, maybe I just didn't notice it. So y'all let me know in the comment section if you feel otherwise about uh, Adisa Isaac. Um, cornerback, sticking with the secondary, uh, Jalen Armour Davis. Continues to do his thing Continues to look good Continues to look confident Continues to look comfortable And that's exactly What he gotta do Again Pepe Williams Same thing Pepe Williams Same, same thing Again especially as a blitzer um, That is a role uh, As a cornerback blitzer Blitzing from the slot um, That's something that Arthur Millette does Very well That's something that Marlon Humphrey Has improved in Doing very well um, Ardarius Washington Can do it too so it's nice that the Ravens got some options when it comes to guys blitzing from the slot because you want to get pressure. You want to get sacks, but you want to get pressure any kind of way that you can. You don't want to sacrifice too much just to get pressure because you'll leave a lot of stuff wide open, but uh, you want to be smart. You want to be aggressive, but you want to be smart with it too. So uh, with Pepe Williams, uh, with the cornerback position, it's a lot of guys there. Uh, it, it ain't too many jobs up for grabs, but Pepe Williams has really been doing his thing as a cornerback. Uh, to try to solidify his spot on the roster Both him and Jalen Alma Davis Both of them They've both been dealing with injuries the past couple of years Their careers have been very similar to one another um, I think Pepe Williams has had more opportunity uh, But still has been limited opportunity So hey, maybe this is the year they can both stay healthy So that would be really, really nice for both of them Now, um, where I will say Pepe Williams wasn't the best fit at In my opinion Was that punt return I like that they're trying it But it just last week it didn't really look that good and then this week it still didn't really look that good in my opinion but as a cornerback he got that as a return man they still got some stuff to work on just in, in, in my opinion um Bo Braid Bo Braid who I don't know why they took his interception from him that was a pick that was a pick because he maintained control of the ball the ball if it did hit the ground it barely hit the ground but it ain't even moved so he, he had control the whole time that, that's an interception I don't know why they took it from him. I'm like, man, y'all really doing my guy nasty in the preseason? No, don't do that. But he's looked good. And then I think the very next play, they went at Bo Braid too. But Bo Braid slipped. But thank goodness the receiver, he caught the ball out of bounds. So it ended up being an incompletion. But, yeah, he's he's looked the part too. I, I, I talked about it earlier. It's going to be tough um, for him to make the roster, though. Uh, because we and we knew that going in. We knew that when they first signed him. It was cool that they signed him. They signed a safety out of University of Maryland. So he's right down the street. Um, man, he played good last week. He played good overall this week, but I just it's for him to make the roster. How? How? How many safeties are the Baltimore Ravens gonna keep? Like they they got a they got a lot of safeties, man. So it's gonna be tough, man. I I, I just I don't see it, man. Um, another person who is gonna be really tough for them to make the roster is Dayton Wade. It's Dayton Wade. As great as that play was yesterday, it's just. Ravens at wide receiver right now. While we would love for their wide receiver room to be stronger, their wide receiver room seems like it's pretty much set with the veterans and with the guys that have been there and obviously and Tez Walker too. Even though Tez Walker been real quiet, we have not heard anything from Tez Walker. I know Harbaugh did say, oh, he's still dealing with a ribs injury. He was out there on special teams yesterday. But on offense, we have not heard anything from Tez Walker. The practice reports and stuff. We don't really hear his name that often either. So hopefully something breaks through real soon. We're hitting a little, having a little slump right now, a little rookie, a little toughness right now, getting a, an adjustment period. But hopefully he can get that together real soon. Um, and he can just, because again, with, with, with Tez Walker, I said, I said this when they first drafted him. I, I said if the Ravens could get 350 yards out of him, I feel like that would be a successful season. I really do. Because I didn't expect him to come in and have this huge, dramatic impact on the Baltimore Ravens. Now, it, it would be nice if he did. We ain't going to complain if he does. But I, I said three, 350 yards, maybe the, even the 400, that would be a successful season for him with the Baltimore Ravens. Because Just simply because of everything in front of him and my expectations for what he would bring to the Baltimore Ravens offense. Somebody to really stretch the field. That's what I think he will bring. I think he's going to be out there all the time, especially, again, they got Zay Flowers, Rashad Bay, Nelson Aguilar, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. Then you still got Lamar Jackson doing this thing. You got Derrick Henry. You got Justice Hill. So you got a lot of people in front of him in the pecking order uh, on the people that touch the ball. So with him, 
being a rookie, fourth round pick, yeah, he's gonna get on the field here and there. But still, and then he even got Tylen Wallace. Tylen Wallace made a really nice catch yesterday. And Tylen Wallace usually preseason, he usually show his stuff like, hey, I could play. But in regular season, we don't really get to see Tylen Wallace too often because of everything that is that's in front of him. Again, it's the pecking order. So I think it's the same case with Tez Walker. That's why I say if you can get three fifty out of him, three fifty is four hundred. Ooh, that that would be great in my opinion. That would be amazing. But we'll see what happens. But anyway, um, glad that the Baltimore Ravens they ended up getting a win in the game. I mean, it ain't really matter too much if they won, if they lost, it's whatever. But um, glad that they were able to get the win. Now you head to Green Bay. And this should be really fun because it's, it's joint practices. So this will be a little different uh, than the regular stuff because before you're practicing against each other. You're practicing against your teammates and stuff. But now you're practicing against another team. So expect fights. Expect brawls. Expect them to have a little Royal Rumble in Green Bay. Cause it, it happens. And that's normal. That's normal. Because these are guys that are fighting for their careers. Guys are literally fighting for jobs Every single day of practice this week and, and stuff will there will be times where stuff does get ugly because that's what joint practices bring. I mean, guys can fight each other on their own team sometimes, but certainly when it comes to other teams, because it's just a completely different atmosphere. So don't be surprised when you see, oh, they were fighting. Oh, there was a brawl that broke out at a Packers Ravens joint practice because they got to go against each other every single day and then they got to play a game. Uh, on when is the game? I think it's on Saturday. I forgot when the game is, but yeah. So, anyway, I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all so much. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. I love y'all. I'll see y'all very, very soon.